Hyperion version 1.52 has just been updated to include new features that help with patch management and third-party patch pack creation. The plugin patch database will now scan all files in the selected directory and all files found in subdirectories one level below. The new default root directory for patches is Wave Sequencer Hyperion Patches, or one level above the Factory Patches folder. This allows the user patches to be saved outside of the Factory Patches folder and allows patch packs to be delivered as separate patch folders. A new subdirectory column in the browser shows in which subdirectory patches are stored relative to the currently selected top directory. A new button has been added above the metadata area, which provides access to a set of patch management tools. As these tools can make big changes to your patches, there is a warning notice in the UI before you can access this UI panel. These tools are mainly intended for advanced users and third-party patch pack developers. With these controls, you can modify multiple patches by confirming which metadata you want to change by clicking on the checkboxes. Another related feature just added is a default collection name setting. The default collection name is User Patches, although in this example I changed it to My User Patches. We can filter by collection type to show just those user patches. Here you can see that some of my user patches are still in the original factory patches folder due to the previous default patch saving location. You can also see that I've saved some new patches with v1.52 and those are getting stored in the root directory. We can clean things up a bit by moving those user patches into their own dedicated subdirectory based on a collection name. Select multiple patches in the browser, then click on the move to collection subdirectory button. The checkbox needs to be selected to confirm the name of the subdirectory to be used. We can rename the collection and it will apply that metadata and also move the files to the new subdirectory of the current directory. The progress window will pop up to show what is going on. You can see the new subdirectory has been created in the system file browser. Hyperion will automatically rescan and update the patch browser contents after the move. You can see the new subdirectory tags in the patch list. As you can see, the new patches were moved successfully into the new system browser directory. You can also see that more recently saved patches are in the root folder. Saving a new patch, you can see that it gets saved by default into the root folder. The new patch is automatically inserted into the patch list. Here we're going to demonstrate changing specific metadata on multiple files. Click on Apply Checked Items to Selected to apply the changes to multiple patches at once. As you can see, the patch metadata has been updated with the new information. Here's another test to show changing the sound type. These tools can be really handy for tidying up your patch set in advance of creating a user importable patch pack. Let's make an example patch pack for sharing. I'm updating the collection name first, however this is also automatically applied if you move the patches to a collection subdirectory. The patches disappeared from the list as the collection filter no longer matches the new collection name. We can quickly find the new collection by filtering again with the new name. Now let's move these patches into their own dedicated subdirectory. The new folder appeared as expected. To export a patch set, we need to select all the files we want to add. This is easier when filtering by the collection name, as you can select with Control-A. 
Clicking the export to patch set file button will create a compressed patch set file in a new directory. Patch sets will automatically include any large audio sample files that are referenced and not embedded in the patch. Patch packs are always exported to the exported patch sets folder adjacent to the factory patches. Here I'm zipping up the original patch set subdirectory and deleting the original files so that we can demonstrate the patch set import feature. You need to refresh the patch list to see changes that were made in the system file browser. The list is automatically refreshed when the plugin is launched or if the current patch folder is changed in the UI. Downloaded patch sets are now automatically imported by Hyperion and Taya at plugin launch. Import the previously created patch set with the import from patch set file button. New patch set is successfully added to the system file browser as a folder with the collection name. It will take a moment for Hyperion to rescan the patch list and add the newly imported patches. If you want to edit patches and overwrite patches directly in a collection subdirectory, you can point the browser directly to that subdirectory. The browser will allow duplicate patch names providing they are in different subdirectories. This also means you can resave a patch from a patch collection, such as the factory patches, and start making changes without affecting the original patch file. When you are ready, you can save as a new file and delete the copy, or you can use the new tools to rename that specific patch. You can identify the patch origination by looking at the author, collection, and subdirectory tags. So to avoid making changes to factory patches, you could apply the author filter. In this example, I've changed the default directory to the new patch set folder. Saving a new patch, it will appear listed in that subdirectory in the system browser. Setting the browser route back to the default top level folder, you can see all available patches, including the new one added to my new patch set. A quick note on the browser design. In general, the Hyperion patch browser philosophy is to be able to access all available patches without needing to search through subfolders to find a particular type of patch. This is why the browser designed to scan multiple subdirectories yet present a flat list to the user. This is particularly important if you want to create combi patches from existing single layer patches as it allows you to filter by specific sound types and categories to quickly reduce the list to the group of candidate sounds that you might want to incorporate in your multi-layer combi. This is why it's unnecessary and counterproductive to create lots of separated patch storage subdirectories in multiple locations and multiple levels of subdirectories, and why Hyperion only scans one level deep. A note to third-party patch pack designers. These new patch tools and browser features are designed to make it easy for third-party developers to create and share patch packs, packs that will be compatible with both Hyperion and Taya. If you'd like to create a professional third-party patch pack and sell it via Traction.com, don't hesitate to reach out.